So this project came from uh, our program staff put together a, uh, a series of bike tours um, in recognition of National Bike Month and Preservation Month. Uh, three bike tours that kind of twiddle around Seattle and uh, provide a way, a way to visit and learn about all the, um, or many of the projects by Paul Theory in Seattle. Uh, Paul Theory was uh, a unique architect. He has an amazing history. Um, he was called the father of Northwest modernism and he was the architect to introduce Seattle and Puget Sound to European modernism, a style that is characterized by pure forms, clean lines, and with a definite focus on emerging technologies. Uh, in this era, it was steel, glass, and reinforced concrete. Uh, Theory himself, he was born in Nome, Alaska in 1904. Uh, his parents had uh, come from France to work there. His father was a, a mining engineer and he was working in the Klondike Gold Rush. And in 1914, uh, Paul Theory's father returned to France to fight in World War I and left Paul and his mother back in Alaska and never returned, unfortunately. Paul's mother, Louise, uh, created a business importing French fashions for wealthy families in Alaska and Seattle. And she dressed celebrities such as Sarah Bernhardt and Isadora Duncan. So a unique family. Um, next slide. So Paul Theory started his education studying medicine at University of Washington and eventually changed to architecture. This is one of his student drawings from 1925. Uh, very much in the Beaux-Arts style that was popular um, or that was represents the work being done at the UW at that time. It's a design for a tennis court building and you can see from the truss structure in the back of the, the building that theory is already thinking about architectural design that's informed by engineering. While he was a student he spent the summer of 1927 studying at the American School in Fontainebleau, France and traveled in France for several months afterward. And he picked up a lot of um, kind of appreciation for modern, modern design that was happening in Europe. Uh, he graduated in 1928 and obtained his architecture license to practice in 1929. And he first worked in the offices of John Graham and Henry Bittman before he opened his own office. Shortly after that, the depression Great Depression happened and there was no work. So he closed his office and decided to take a year to travel uh, he visited his classmate, George Nakashima, who became a famous furniture designer in Japan, and then traveled through Asia, Europe, and Central America. In his travels, he met influential modernists such as Antonin Raymond and Le Corbusier. On his return to Seattle in 1935, Theory embarked on a lifelong practice in Seattle of over 50 years. He's best known for his work as the principal architect of the 1962 Seattle World's Fair and for designs of expressive modern churches, houses, and institutional projects. Paul Theory's career left a lasting impact on the local built environment through a practice focused on research, architectural design, campus design, and urban planning. Now I'll go through a list of projects that represent just a small sampling of the progression and breadth of his career. Next slide. So this is the Lake Crest Apartment Court uh, in Madison Park. Is, he did this project just out of architecture school with a partner, James M. Taylor. And he designed the Southern section of this collection of five revival style apartment buildings. Other sections of the complex were designed by William Bain Sr. Uh, Bain in collaboration with Lionel Priest and Frederick Anhalt. This early project reflects theories more conservative historicist work in the French Norman style before his travels around the world piqued his interest in modernist design. Next. This is Paul Theory's own house. Uh, inspired by his travels, it's in Denny Blaine. Um, Theory envisioned a house for himself and his mother, which embodied modernist ideas. He designed a, a pure box form of a house raised on piloti, like stilts, where the site's topography and landscape would be undisturbed. However, he was unable to obtain financing for such a non-traditional house. As built, the house was still modern with its asymmetrical form, flat roof, lack of ornament, and use of new materials like prefabricated steel windows, steel railings, floor to ceiling plate glass windows and sliding doors. The house is fairly closed at the street but opens at the rear to gardens and features an open floor plan. Next. Here you can see the house today. It's still intact, although some windows have changed and it's clearly not its pure modern white uh, color anymore, but 
you can see the, the windows and the railings are still there and the house seems elevated off the site as it was originally. Um, it's really challenging to photograph this house. Uh, next slide. This is the chancery of the Seattle Archdiocese in First Hill, close to our offices. You can see the towers of St. James in the background. The building originally had a pyramidal central volume that flank, was flanked by two single story wings. Um, the building looks quite different now. Um, a practicing architect, I'm sorry, practicing Catholic architect, Derry was interested in modern church design and he co-authored a book called Churches and Temples in 1953. And he received many church commissions in the region throughout his career. This office building for the archdiocese is clad in Wilkinson sandstone and reveals just a hint of ornament in some subtle incised floral panels. Next slide. This is the building today. Uh, Theory refused an offer to design an, this addition, complaining that the alterations would spoil his design and that the church would not have to expand. This is a quotation, not have to expand if it would just concentrate on its mission and forget about all the social prog programs they were getting into, unquote. Uh, he would not receive any more commissions from the Seattle Archdiocese. Next slide. This is the Nichols House of the same period. Uh, it's in North Capitol Hill. Uh, Theory did not have an easy time convincing his clients to embrace his enthusiasm for modernism. As such, many of his residential designs show a hybrid of traditional forms with modernist details. And the Nichols House certainly exemplifies this with its hipped roof form, while also featuring prominent steel corner windows, a masonry screen, and uh, an occupiable garage roof, all composed in pure white stucco. Next slide. This is the Martin and Neckman um, men's clothing store. It was built in 1949 on the Ave and 45th Street. Martin and Neckman first opened in 1923, and they were a staple on the Ave for men's clothing, occupying several locations before a hiring theory in 1949 to construct a new store on the southwest corner of Northeast 45th Street and University Way. The building is a shimmering glass box with both primary transparent facades allowing for the display of fashionable goods held inside. The building has not been treated well by recent tenants and is certainly at risk in the burgeoning redevelopment of the U District. Next slide. This is the Northeast Branch Library, uh, north of the university. It uh, reflects the post-World War II growth of Seattle. Um, it was constructed to serve expanding single family neighborhoods north of the university. With its sweeping uh, post and beam gable form constructed of steel and glue laminated beams, Theory's design was meant to conform to the residential district it served with huge windows, deep overhangs to protect interiors from direct sunlight and the integration of landscape. The design was immediately published in local and national publications. And the building received an AIA award in 1957. While still an investigation of emerging building technologies, this time in wood, the library reflects a softening of the pure modernism of Theory's earlier work. The Northeast Branch Library was designated a city of Seattle landmark in 2001. Next slide. This is the Cedar Park Elementary School uh, in Cedar Park at the very north end of the city. Also built to help meet the needs of a burgeoning post-World War II Seattle population. Cedar Park School opened in 1959 and operated as a neighborhood elementary school until it closed in 1981. It then became the long-term home to a community of Seattle artists. Collaborating with structural engineer, Peter Hostmark, Theory's design was for an innovative structural system of exposed precast concrete frames, tilt up concrete walls and precast concrete roof panels, exemplifying Northwest modernism in concrete. The school was designated a city landmark in 2012 and was recently rehabilitated and reopened for its original use as a school. Next slide. This is St. Demetrios Greek Orthodox Church in Montlake. A modern interpretation of Byzantine vaulted architecture, Theory was hired to design a new church for the Greek Orthodox community when their proposed church site in the uptown neighborhood became part of the fairgrounds for the Century 21 exposition in 1962. Continuing Theory's interest in building technology, he again worked with Peter Hostmark to design eight intersecting vaults of thin shell concrete topped by a central precast lantern. The technology allowed for expansive luminous openings filled with multicolored glass supported by a striated brick exterior, which helps to blend in the residential neighborhood. 
The original landscape was by Rich Haig. Next slide. This is the Washington State Coliseum. We now call it the Climate Pledge Arena in Uptown. The iconic Washington State Coliseum continued theories exploration into building technology, again in collaboration with Hostmark. As the unique hyperbolic paraboloid roof form emerged, the press called the building a giant aluminum teepee. The arena had no interior roof supports. The aluminum panel roof was supported by steel compression trusses and nearly six miles of steel tension cables. As the principal architect of the 1962 World's Fair, Theory collaborated on the creation of the campus with other prominent designers, including Minoru Yamasaki, Lawrence Halperin, and John Graham and others. After the fair, the theory oversaw the excavation of the exhibition hall, which is seen on the right, right photograph on this slide. Um, sorry, I lost my, my notes here. I can, uh, converting it into a sports and performance venue, of course. The Coliseum was designated a city landmark in 2017, meeting all six designation criteria. So it's kind of a uh, one of the few kind of landmark slam dunks that, uh, that, that meets all six criteria. Uh, Paul Theory's experience with the World's Fair would propel him into national prominence, serving on the planning committees for the state capitol campus, as well as the National Mall in DC. He became an active participant in public debates in the city on design, architecture, and planning, and he advocated against the construction of the Highway 99 viaduct on the waterfront, as well as Interstate 5 through the city. Next slide. Besides the arena, uh, Theory designed several other temporary buildings for the fair. This is the Ford Motor Company building. And you can see the character of, through his drawing, the character of the, the building itself, his uh, style had kind of changed over the years as uh, architectural styles also shifted. And a lot of these temporary buildings were really fanciful and were only designed to be there during the fair. They were demolished afterwards. Next slide. This is the Washington Mutual Savings Bank. Uh, it's downtown on 2nd Avenue. Uh, it's a mid-century downtown bank building that replaced the former home of Washington Mutual, which had been housed in a solid masonry bank building constructed in 1899. The modern replacement created a feeling of space and air with recessed windows and balconies creating an interplay around the four story tall prefabricated columns, which were poured 15 miles away in Redmond and then trucked to the site. Washington Mutual occupied the building for 40 years until the financial collapse of the bank in 2008. It's now occupied by designers who can be inspired by the work of their predecessor, Paul Theory. Next slide. I thought it'd be good to show a few projects that we are no longer with, that, but with us, but also are important to the body of Theory's work. Um, on the left side is Theory's own office. He designed it at 800 Columbia on First Avenue, I mean, on First Hill, sorry. Um, designed it in 1946, and it's where he would practice for his entire career over 50 years. And it was demolished in 2012. On the right-hand side is the original look of the Mohai building, which was really a clear and beautiful expression of Theory's appreciation for European modernism. It was uh, much altered during the years and was eventually demolished as well in 2015 and 16. Next slide. I thought I would close with this uh, slide of uh, Northgate Elementary School. Theory claimed to be inspired by the Northwest Coast native culture and acknowledged the influence of longhouse structures in his designs. Northgate Elementary School shows this design inspiration with its pure long gabled forms and express structure. Unfortunately, the Seattle Landmarks Preservation Board, Board voted against nominating the building in March 2020 and it's slated for demolition. In fact, the fence is up around the schoolyard and we expect it to be demolished fairly soon. So with that, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions.